Some watches are special the first time you put them on. You know, watches purchased to mark a big milestone or handed down from a parent. But most watches don't really have much sentimental value at first. You might like the way a watch looks, but the real bond comes from wearing it as you live your life. The more you wear your watches, the more memories become embedded into them. Just like how we all feel emotionally attached to our first car or how a certain fragrance can teleport us back to a different time or place. Watches become more meaningful over time if you wear them. And I'm not alone in feeling this way. That's why among watch fans, there's this concept of the go anywhere, do anything watch. The kind of timepiece that's never out of place that could even be a one watch collection even if it's not. For me, if I had to pick one watch to wear for the rest of my life, it would be a stainless steel dive watch with a dark dial and modest proportions. Like this one, the Zodiac Super Seawolf Reference 691. It's the kind of watch you can wear to a business casual office gig during the week, then keep it on all weekend as you're running errands, at the pool with your kids, or taking your better half out to dinner. Why a diver? They just make sense. They're durable by design. They're built to withstand the elements and to be submerged. You know, many watches can't do that. And I don't know about you, but when I go to the pool or the beach, I wanna wear a watch that I don't have to worry about. Like if I take it in the water, I know it won't get damaged. I don't wanna have to hide my watch in the bottom of my shoe and hope that it's still there when I get back to my umbrella. I want my watch to stay where it belongs on my wrist. And that's why I've always loved dive watches. I mean, anybody who's into watches probably has a diver or three in their collection. And while there are thousands to choose from, for me, a great dive watch has to check a few boxes. First, it has to be actually water resistant. Like this reference 691 has 200 meters of water resistance, so you can actually take it swimming and snorkeling and even diving. Of course, getting caught in the rain or doing dishes with this on won't be a problem. Second, I prefer a brand with some heritage. I just enjoy a brand that has contributed to the trade of watchmaking, a watch that has a story behind it. Like Zodiac, they've been in the watch game for over 140 years, starting off with handmade pocket watches back in the late 1800s. This brand helped pioneer complications that we now take for granted, like the power reserve indicator. Then in the 1950s, Zodiac launched the Seawolf collection, some of the first actual dive watches that regular people could buy. And this 691 reissue actually pays homage to those early mid-century Zodiac divers. Third, I prefer a mechanical watch. There's just something about having a small piece of analog gear attached to my person as I move about my increasingly digital life. I love the symbiotic relationship between watch and wearer. You know, with an automatic, the movement of your body powers the watch. With a manual wind movement like this one, you put your energy into the watch via the daily ritual of winding it up. It's something you have to remember to do, like marking off the day on an old-fashioned wall calendar or brewing your morning coffee. Sure, you could get a quartz watch. You could just use your phone. I think that's what makes it special. It's something that we choose. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, I want a watch that looks good on my wrist. I have somewhat thin wrists at about six and a quarter inches around, and it can be hard to find a diver that has a low enough profile that doesn't overpower my wrist. This Zodiac Super Seawolf Reference 691 reissue, a precursor to the brand's legendary Seawolf skin diver, has a 36 millimeter case. So it's retro by today's standards, but perfect for me. It's also pretty thin for a dive watch at just 12 millimeters, so it's ready to slide under the cuff of any shirt. With a compact 44 millimeter lug to lug and a tasteful 18 millimeter lug width, this 691 has modern engineering housed inside of old school dimensions. By the way, a quick note on watch size. Many camera lenses make watches look bigger than they actually are, and your phone's lens is like the worst offender. That's why a wrist shot taken with your phone always looks a bit off. To get a more realistic idea of what a watch looks like on your wrist, look in the mirror. It's always gonna look a bit smaller in the mirror, and that's closer to how the human eye actually sees it, the more you know. Back to my point, this Zodiac is the perfect size for my wrist. And that means it checks all the boxes for a go anywhere, do anything watch. Let's take a closer look at it. The 36 millimeter stainless steel case features a unidirectional countdown bezel and sapphire crystal over a glossy black dial. The applied numerals and hour markers are highly legible. With just three lines of printed text, it's a clean, uncluttered dial, especially by today's standards. The screw down crown is marked with Zodiac's logo. It's grippy and easy to turn. The quick release three link bracelet, also stainless steel, tapers down to a butterfly deployment clasp that has a slight bit of stretch built in for comfort. I've actually never seen this, and I have to say, it's really comfortable. If I get elected, all water fountains will be soda fountains, and all butterfly clasps will be stretchy. Vote for me. This Swiss diver is powered by a hand-wound 
in-house mechanical movement, the new STP-1-12M. It has a 40-hour power reserve, plenty of juice for a daily driver. You can use the bezel as a countdown timer. So for example, I'll often write in 20-minute sprints. So if I just line the minute hand up with the 20-minute hash mark, my timer is now set. So when the minute hand reaches the black triangle, 20 minutes is up. I have to say this bezel is perfectly aligned with the minute markers and it's extra clicky, very satisfying to fidget with. ASMR. The hands and oversized Arabic even numbers are filled with creamy superluminova loom. Loom is also used to mark the odd number hours and 12 o'clock, as well as the frame style secondhand pointer. It's powerful loom with a bright green glow and that's actually the only color you're gonna find on this little dive watch. If you prefer a more colorful timepiece, you should take some time to browse the rest of Zodiac's Super Seawolf collection. The brand is sort of known for their fun color combos like Creamsicle and Watermelon. They also have some interesting dials like Malachite and Lapis. If you like the style and proportions of this reference 691, but you want a lighter dial, you should consider the limited edition Cream Colorway available from Craft and Tailored. Of course, you can never go wrong with black on stainless steel, and that's why this is my preferred reference. To me, this reissue really does feel like a vintage dive watch, but without relying on artificial patina, which can be a bit gimmicky. It's the size, it's the manual winding movement, and the uncluttered dial, the mid-century styling. It all just comes together to produce a subtle old-school vibe. At the same time, it's good to know that the inner workings, the actual mechanical movement housed inside this 36 millimeter case, are the latest and greatest that Switzerland has to offer. So unlike an actual vintage watch, this one doesn't have to be babied. You don't have to leave it at home when you head out for your beach vacation. And that's great because you should wear your watches as much as you can. You know, make it your companion through good times and bad. Wrap it in your memories. Build that sentimental value over time. With time, this little watch that you bought because you liked the way that it looked, will become one of your most prized possessions. And maybe one day you can pass the memories and the sentiment onto somebody else. I wanna thank Zodiac Watches for supporting the channel by partnering with me on this video. It's pretty cool to be able to work with a 140 year old brand that's still making their watches in the heart of Switzerland. I'd love to hear from you. What do you look for in a go anywhere, do anything watch? Let me know in the comments. Thank you as always for watching and until next time, stay stylish.